Hey cellists, today I'm going to be talking about how to learn to do vibrato on the cello. Now the best way to learn to do vibrato is by having regular lessons with a good private cello teacher. I'm going to show you the exercises that I use when I'm teaching my own students how to do vibrato. And whether you are learning vibrato on your own or you have a teacher or maybe you're a teacher trying to learn how to teach vibrato to somebody else, I hope you'll find something useful in this video. I also recommend checking out my video of pre-vibrato exercises. These are some exercises that I like to give my students starting at about the end of book one, just to get everything set up before they start really learning to do vibrato. I have to say that vibrato is something that you're not going to learn how to do in a week or even a month. It's going to take months of focused practice before you start to get a basic vibrato that really sounds good. And it takes years of practice to really refine your vibrato. So I'll give you these exercises and give a little bit of an idea of the time frame that you should be working on these, uh, keeping in mind that everybody's different, everybody's going to go at their own pace. Before I get into the exercises, I want to tell you the two most important points about the mechanics of cello vibrato. And the first one is that the vibrato motion always comes from an up and down action of the forearm coming from the elbow. This is where the vibrato motor comes from, right here in the elbow. I know violinists do a vibrato from the wrist, but that doesn't translate to anything on the cello, so it comes from this. Now you've also probably seen cellos vibrating and it looks like the hand is rocking like this, but the motion is still going this way, never by twisting like a doorknob like this. The second very important thing for doing vibrato is to have a nicely C-shaped hand with loose fingers. If you hold your hand out like this and just keep it nice and loose, you should be able to wiggle all of your fingers very easily like this. All the joints wiggling, especially in this base joint, wiggling like this. Now, if you clench your hand up and try it again, you'll notice that the fingers don't want to wiggle very much. Now, let's go the other way. Hold onto the finger and just move your hand up and down like this. This is the basic vibrato motion that we're going for. This wiggliness of the fingers is essential for having a really good vibrato. So this is one of the reasons the hand must stay loose, good hand position, and these things will get you off on the right track for having a good vibrato. The first exercise I give my students, I call it the rubber handshake. And it's just sort of getting your hand loosened up. You just pretend instead of a real hand, you have like a novelty rubber hand that you're holding out and acting like you're doing a handshake, nice and gentle like this, just to feel how rubbery your fingers can be. I've had a few students that shake it like this, like a bunch of spiders just landed on your hand and you're trying to shake them off. So you don't have to be violent shaking, just, just very gentle like this. The next exercise is slides. Really very simple, putting all four fingers with a nice C shape to your hand on the D string, or you can even go between the A and D string and just sliding up and down like this. Very important to have a good angle to your elbow. If you have the habit of droopy cello elbow, it's time to fix that and get the angle right. Now the proper angle puts the forearm and the back of the hand is more or less in a straight line. So if you're like this, you don't want to have that bend. You also don't want to be like this with this angle here, because that's gonna just tire out your shoulder. So for your own body, whatever gives you a good straight line here and a nice, easy path to go up and down is what we want. So this is gently sliding till your thumb hits the crook of the neck and back. You can go at a moderate pace. Don't try to go too fast. Now I'll give students this exercise to do for about a whole week, maybe 30 seconds or a minute a day. It seems like a long time to do this, but I'm really trying to build the association in my student's head that vibrato is this basic motion instead of associating that with vibrato. So around on the second week, if this all looks nice and loose, I'll start finger wiggles. And that just means one finger at a time, we start by sliding with just one finger down with a little weight on that finger, narrowing down until we actually just get to one part of the fingerboard. And it doesn't matter at all where we land. And then you're just gently wiggling 
the hand. It's that same feeling we had of this. And that's it, not fast, just nice and gentle. And go through all of the fingers. I think it's useful to do the fingers that work the best first. So a lot of times three and two are usually the best fingers. So I would do something like three, two, one, four, something like that. It doesn't really matter, but I find hitting the easiest fingers first helps get the idea. And basically you're starting with the slides again for each finger and doing this. This is gonna be another week, maybe a minute every day, or maybe two minutes at the most. But try to do it every day. And sometimes if I feel like students aren't really getting the wiggliness that I want, they might have to do this for a couple of weeks till this gets starts to look nice and really loose the way we want it to. Still no bow at this point. After the finger wiggles are looking good, we're going to do taps. Now this is an idea I got from a wonderful Suzuki teacher named Alice Vieira. I did some Suzuki teacher training with her. She wrote an article about teaching vibrato that I think is really wonderful and I'm not sure how easily you can find it, but I'll, I'll try to put some information um, in the comments. But she has students going down to the fourth position area and actually letting the hand tap on the top of the cello and with one finger down so that you can keep a nice regular flow to this. And also it's a kind of nice area to do the vibrato motion kind of free for the arm to do this. So at this point, I'll have them do the taps each time the cello hits the top, that's one tap, and you start counting them. And it doesn't really matter how, matter how much you're counting to, but I like to do something like groups of four. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And of course, going through each finger. These are kind of progressive and cumulative exercises. So it's often a good idea for each finger to go back to the slides, the wiggles, and then do the taps on each finger. As the hand stays loose with this, then you can start going faster, but never faster than you can count. So maybe one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If you feel like you're getting to the speed where the hand starts to tighten, and then you can't get the wiggliness, then you gotta slow down just a little bit. So this one probably will take at least a week, maybe a couple of weeks to feel this be really nice and loose. Once you can do these taps with nice loose finger and counting them, finally we're going to add the bow to this. Um, the first thing that's going to happen when you add the bow, by the way, that your nice, beautiful, loose hand is going to probably kind of tighten up or, and or, your beautiful sound that you could make with the bow is gonna sound a little bit bad because now you're trying to think of two things at once and it's really hard to do them both well at first until you get used to it. So you just have to be patient. Uh, you kind of have to toggle your attention back and forth between your left hand and your bow and eventually you'll be able to sort this out. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do is what I call moos. Um, I watched a violin teacher who did this and called them meows, like cats meows. But I feel like it sounds a little bit more like a cow mooing on the cello, so they call them moos. This is just basically to get that wiggling finger motion put together with the bow. So a lot of students, when they start doing this kind of thing with the bow, they'll do one down bow and they'll circle back and do another down bow and keep going like this. But I really encourage my students to always do a down bow and then change bows and do an up bow again. So that first of all, you get a, a feeling for doing the bow change while you vibrate. And also, you know, we do have to vibrate when we're doing up bows as well. So once this is going well, this may take another week or so just to get the bow in the hand to start to coordinate. Once this happens, we're gonna start counting and getting ready to accelerate the vibrations. And I think the best way to do this when you start out is by counting in even numbered groups. And I start with fours, 
So I'll show you why we do even number groups as we go. I'm trying to set up so you can see my bow here. And I'm just gonna do fours up and down, a nice bouncy motion with my hand for each down bow and then up bow. <laughs> So that would be the fours. And this may be one week's, of work, one week's worth of work here to get this nice and even. By the way, what's going on with the thumb behind the neck is a loose thumb not stuck down. And this is something that once we really learn to do vibrato, I think most of the time, most professional cellos, when they're doing a nice big vibrato, let go of the thumb. It's a personal decision, but when you're first learning, you should definitely just let the thumb be loose. It helps everything be loose. So once you get fours, you can go to sixes. Now this is the reason that I do odd numbers because as you get to higher numbers, it's easier to count half the bow and then half the bow. So sixes would be three and three. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Once you're good at this, you would do eights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just build on that. Now, this is just going to be one of those things that you get up to the number that you can do before the hand stops looking like this and starts looking like this. So once you get up to 12, 14, 16, that's the area that starts to actually sound like vibrato. So I'll try to do 12. <laughs> This would be an, a decent slow vibrato. 14. And I think I got 14 in there. And let's try 16. I'm just changing fingers just to change it around a little bit. So by that point, it starts to really sound like vibrato. When you get to this point, and you can do this on every finger, and you can start putting it in different parts of the cello, then you have your basic cello vibrato. So once you have your basic vibrato, it's time to start going finger to finger. So that means really just getting your good vibrato, whatever finger. And then on a bow change, go to a different finger. slurs and I really like students to just sort of improvise a little bit so that they can get the feeling of this just sort of make up something part of the reason I want to do that is because once you put this into a piece of music which is our our goal all along we're really wanting to get to that point but then we get very distracted by playing the music and again, the beautiful vibrato that we've worked so hard on suddenly clamps down and doesn't work so well. So a little bit of work on just this little improvising, walking finger to finger helps get to that next step. Then as far as um, the first things to actually put vibrato in, I like to take the few maybe book one pieces. Unfortunately, the Suzuki repertoire tends to have fast music more than slow music in the early books. So it's hard to find nice slow things, but I think French folk song is a good one because you also get rep repeated notes on the same finger. Don't worry about the open strings. Um, I'm doing a you know pretty slow vibrato because this is what I would want to have. Um, a few other pieces that I like to use vibrato on. Uh, Judas Maccabeus on a slow, a slow tempo is good. That's, that's another pretty good one. All of the uh, Moon Over the Ruin Castle um, versions are good. I'm not really big on doing fast pieces and then just throwing vibrato in on the few slow notes that come up because I think that ends up ending up giving you sort of an on and off kind of vibrato, whereas in the end, we want to have a vibrato that we can really use throughout a piece of music. I've gone through this in, uh, you know, 10 minutes on a video, but this is going to be 
something that you will have to really work your way up to. And be honest with yourself. Don't rush this. Be honest with which point your hand starts to not be loose anymore. One of the things that I want to really stress is that if you let your hand get tense along the way, you can really go off the path to good vibrato and end up on the path to the electric shock vibrato. That is the vibrato that's kind of like this. You see a lot of students, I've seen it a thousand times, and it's not beautiful unless you are going to be doing a soundtrack to some kind of a space alien movie. It's not a good vibrato. Unfortunately, it's very often the vibrato that students end up with. And once they learn that vibrato, it's very hard to unwind that. So be really on guard. I'm gonna make another video uh, later where we talk about some problems with vibrato and how to solve that problem. So if you're one of those electric shock vibrato people, uh, ho hopefully we'll have some help for you later. Well, there's certainly a lot more that can be said about learning to do vibrato, but I hope you found some things that are useful on this video. I always welcome your comments and questions. I hope you keep practicing and making beautiful music on your cello.